piece of evidence that was always really interesting and compelling to me was that we knew from from Arctic explorations that fresh meat actually cures scurvy. So it's very famous to talk about limeys and people bringing um, citrus fruits to get vitamin C to prevent scurvy in those explorations. But what seems to have become less um, <laughs> noticed is that this this point that it was known that fresh meat would cure it. And, and so that's why I started looking into whether there was something else in meat that might actually be helping. And the first thing I thought about was um, to do with collagen, because we know that vitamin C is required for the synthesis of collagen. But from everything that I could tell, um, when you eat collagen, it has to be broken back down into its constituent amino acids. And the vitamin C step is needed for rebuilding them into the right structure for collagen. And so it seems like it can't possibly spare it to eat it that way if it's being broken down again. But the same is not true for carnitine, which is a very important um, amino acid, especially for uh, fat metabolism, because it's required to transport fatty acids into the mitochondrion for, for burning them for energy. And so I started looking into carnitine and found out that carnitine itself gets absorbed fully intact. And so if you don't need vitamin C to synthesize carnitine, it, there can be a sparing effect there. And it was interesting to find out things, for example, that in the progression of scurvy, long before these you know, telltale signs like bleeding gums and wounds not healing, that are collagen effects start to happen. What, what first happens is that people get really, really tired. And I think that that's probably a symptom of carnitine deficiency. And so once you get a lot of carnitine in your system, maybe that allows that bit of vitamin C that's there to now start going toward collagen synthesis and everything starts to come back together.